Hey, it's Joey Thurman. I'm excited to bring you season two of the Fad or Future podcast. We live in a world where information is everywhere, easy to access, and sometimes not always accurate, especially in the health and wellness space, which is exactly why I created this show. There's two sides to every story, and I'm here to present both and let you decide, is it a fad or is it the future? Health fads come and go, but the science behind them is what makes them work or fail. I'm bringing the experts to you and putting the facts on the table so you can decide how and where to put your efforts in your own personal health and wellness journey. What's going on? It's Joey Thurman. Here's another episode of the Fad or Future podcast. Happy New Year's Eve. If you're listening to this, happy 2021. You're probably happy that 2020 is behind you, but we're going to talk about why you need to be a fucking failure. You got to fail at life. My guest today, good friend, Travis Ritchie, entrepreneur, advisor, investor, uh, even invested in 25 startup companies in the last 10 years. He definitely knows a thing about success and failure. Current owner of a bunch of fitness concepts. I've been to many of them. They're high, high quality. Real estate investor um, at the age of 25, you control the hedge fund with $10 million under management, but due to regulatory oversight in the state of Arizona, he's actually charged with transactions uh, of an unregistered securities dealer and sentenced to two years in the pen in Arizona Department of Corrections, uh, armed with an MBA in finance and a PhD from the School of Hard Knocks. He founded Accomplished Ventures to bring individuals both incarcerated and reentered uh, both incarcerated and reentered a second chance uh, at a successful life. Over the past decade, his uh, programs have helped uh, and, and been used by thousands of inmates uh, in numerous departments of corrections to bring life skills, job training, and education to the justice-impacted community. Sometimes referred to as the Tony Robbins of the prison world. Do well, you think Tony would survive in prison, Travis? He, he probably he's, he's, he's a big dude. dude. He's a You're big right. dude. He probably beats the shit out of Travis definitely. <laughs> Travis definitely sp- speaks the language of failure and perseverance to inmates nationwide, bringing them hope and purpose. Well, first of all, Travis, I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, you've you've been um, a friend by distance over years, and uh, you know we we met each other for the first time in person. Uh, a year or so ago, but uh, you've been a true friend um, during all of this shit, because as people are going to find out, I have failed a lot in 2020. Um, I have my own own issues. I think we all do, but I just want to say thank you so much for being uh, such a good friend. Oh man, likewise. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was, uh, I think it's always fortuitous how friendships happen or relationships happen. And so I think, I think I've considered myself incredibly fortunate over the years. So I'm happy to be here, brother. Thanks so much for the time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting how we met. You were working for a company. You wanted to do some fitness videos with me. That ended up not working. You left yeah. the company and then we stayed in touch and I ended up in LA and then we finally met um, face-to-face. And when I was getting ready to take four or five million in investment for a fitness lab concept right in March of 2020, yeah. turned out probably not being a good idea. <laughs> and then, then 2020 happened. We don't need to get into that. And um, yeah, man, I mean, I, I, I think that this topic is really interesting because we, we want to talk about failure and why you contacted me and you wanted to do something on failure and why we need yeah. to talk about that. I mean, why do you want to talk about that? Yeah, it. you know, for me, the biggest thing that when you look at what's gone on in 2020, I think it requires a different level of perspective around what we should accept in terms of failure outside ourselves and inside ourselves. I think, you know, with the, the hashtag failure society that we live in, shout out to uh, Shauna Barker, Sister-in-law, rock the shirt at midnight for me. Um, he's, he's wearing a shirt that says hashtag failure right now. So ha- hashtag failure. Uh, this will be on, on the clips and on YouTube, but um, make sure you ha- hashtag failure when you guys listen to this. Hashtag failure. Yeah, it, for me, it's too, it's too pronged. Number one, nobody woke up like this. And I think that is what I want to spread about social media and a lot of the misperceptions that are there. Most people wake up uh, compare themselves to their, their top 10 or their top 20 social media feeds, uh, cry, um, you know, then roll over and, and check their bank account, vomit, 
um, and 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 then convince themselves to take 135 filtered photos, to then <laughs> have woken up like so. Um, and I want to change that narrative myself. And you know, I think there's a lot of other individuals that are out there championing the cause of grit. I I say that you know, all fun and games, you know, pun intended with the influencers. But for me. I believe the story is in the struggle, not in the avoidance of the struggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, I even get that because as a, you know, as much as I hate the word influencer, right? Like I I still get paid to make some posts and the blue check mark helps and all that sort of stuff. But I even made a post yesterday about, about, I made a post and a reel and reels are popular and they're trending right now. Right. So post reels, post reels, people are checking a reel. And I posted in 10 minutes later, I only had like 35 people like it and watch it at that point. And I literally kept refreshing the screen and I stopped. Like, I need to stop doing this because my need wow. for the likes caused me to dislike myself. And that is like, mm. I, you, you know, like I hate social media so much, but I also love it. I get a lot of guests. I met yeah. a lot of friends on there, but it, it's just a bunch of bullshit. And you're right. Like we, we get up in the morning, we take a bunch of pictures and try to perfect lighting and setting and filter and try to do that. And I compare myself to other people that have millions of followers or more views or even less followers, but they've got, you know, more engagement and it's just a never right. ending yeah. cycle. Right. Right. And, and, and it's interesting that you say that because, right, for so long, measuring oneself against other people is kind of been the MO of the human mind. For so many years, it's been helpful, right? You can inspire, you can feel inspired when you see someone else's achievements. Um, you know, you and I have a, have a healthy banter back and forth about the fitness world that we're in. when you're looking at people's recognition and realize that their abilities can be your abilities and you use those to boost your self-esteem, I think that's when, you know, you have compatible friendships, compatible relationships, and that's when social media wins. I, but I also come from a perspective that I want to see you win. I genuinely want to see you win. I know what your family is and, and I genuinely want to see you rise above the tides therein lies kind of the the murky waters of social media is when the comparisons are harmful when they leave you feeling inferior or depressed Mm. but the comparisons are helpful when they inspire and motivate you yeah so i mean how do people do that like how how can you really within yourself try to differentiate using social media to help you as opposed to a hindrance such a good question. It really is. I mean, I think, I think so often what we can do is, is we can, when we look at social media, we often do it during our downtime, right? Moments that we should be more self-reflective. And those are the moments that usually stick with you in the back of your mind. Somebody, you know, has a better looking significant other or a better background, or as you said, more likes, but Mm -hmm where I think we change it to is we should look at it and we should understand that our chapter one or our chapter 10 is not somebody else's chapter one or chapter 10. And for me, I say, screw the scoreboard. When social media stirs up feelings of inadequacy, I think you can look at yourself and stay focused on yourself instead of looking at others. Yeah, and then that's, I think, you know, a lot of people say that, but it's really hard to actually do. You know, the thing that drives me crazy is when I see all these posts like, hey, you know what's great? Get up in the morning and have a positive attitude. What the fuck? <laughs> no, like that doesn't happen. You can't just like get up and say everything is great. Like there has to be some sort of actionable item that gets you there. Right? It needs to be t- like, like things need to be hard at some point for you to change. Like I really wish I could wake up in the morning and, and just pretend that I could be happy. And then the rest of the day I'm happy, but life happens, man. What do you, what do you, what are you supposed to do? I yeah. mean, like, what can we really do to actually fix this? Well, I think one of the things that you said is, is actions, right? Like, I think the thing to do, the pandemic taught us that life is going to be a battle. Life is a battleground. 
and we've had our whole world turned upside down. And so ultimately the greatest protection against falling into the comparison trap and the best pull, the best way to pull yourself out of it is to develop and maintain that stable sense of self. We know that. But as you said, like what's the actionable items, right? What, what can we do? I think right now people are yearning for a sense of leadership and bath bombs and you know the, the Epsom salts and the, and the candles of the world. They're great and they're wonderful. And I love motivation. Don't get me wrong. I love motivation. I love inspiration. But telling people that you're enough with, with self-care and bath bombs just isn't going to get people through the day. I mean, you know, I, I, I firmly believe that very few people care about their waistline in a pandemic if they're in the soup line. Mm. So what we need to do right now is we need to show people that grit and action never go out of style. That's mm. what I want to do. That's what I believe. I believe that you have to show people that situations don't crumble you situations don't define you and you need to find the action inside that situation and move forward what you do is you then create this this ecosystem this little microcosm where you take action you move forward you grit your teeth you don't make excuses and then you start to find other like-minded folks around you who are doing the same things that mental toughness is not something that most people are born with it's something that you acquire and when chaos hits, average people panic, but average people want a greater sense of order and certainty. And it's the same reason that right now that we're, we're so willing to let so much government overreach within our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. People are craving that certainty. They're craving the security so badly that they're willing to, to, to let their freedoms be taken from them. Hmm. So I think we need to really, really, really focus in on the grit of what 2020 has brought us, the action items of what 2020 has brought us. And instead of allowing ourselves to get lost in the chaos, we need to figure out what is that true identity, that true self-esteem? How do I nourish the relationship within myself and the real relationship with who I am? The real relationship, not the, the hashtag, not the social media relationship, but the real staying attuned to your truest self. So, I mean, how do you do that? How, how do you do you as you say, right? Uh, I mean, you, you've got some good sayings. And one thing that I often go back to is um, your why, right? Like, uh, I mean, we did, we did a call yeah. months back and you're talking about what's your why. So I always kind of I look at that too, but I mean, how do you do you? Like, how, how do we keep moving forward? Or yeah. what, what happens when we fall on our face or should we fall on our face? Yeah, very good question. I mean, so if, if I'm going to give you a, a simple, how do you do you start to finish? I think number one, first and foremost, is that you seek connection, not comparison. Mm. When, when you can truly connect with yourself and connect with those individuals about shared experiences that make you genuine human, uh, those emotional connections, I think that's when you can foster the kind of relationships that have been known to be valuable offline. That's where I feel fortunate, you know, you, you and I have that exact offline valuable relationship, although it did start on social media. So the first mm. and foremost, I think you seek connection, not comparison. Mm. Um, my second, my, my second piece of advice is going to be, I, I would, what I like to call look up, um, look up just a little bit is that people, you know, when, there's decades of research that go into to the thought process that children who compare themselves to their peers who slightly outperform them can produce better results, right? We've all heard so many stories about teachers that will, you know, take a child with a learning disability, but will tell the child that they don't have the disability or will coach them up higher than they should be, right? And that path to improvement is just incredible in, in people's eyes, right? So when when I say look up just a little bit, I view it from an aspirational perspective, not an inspirational perspective, such as I want to aspire to be like that individual for some of the key tenets of their life, you know, physical, financial, family, faith, you know, whatever it might be, the tenets, those core values of what make that human special, that to me is where you look up to just a little bit.
Yeah, I mean, I think my that, uh, my third piece. Of advice. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I I think that makes makes a ton of sense too. I mean, if, even if like in the athletic world, like, uh, do you, are you getting do you get better by playing people that are worse than you? And often you play down, mm-hmm. right? So if, if you if you surround yourself yeah. with, with you know the uh, whether whatever sport you're playing, or if you're playing a better team, you will play up that level so i i like to look at things a lot of times from when i was playing hockey you know and we go and play a a better team you know we were forced to step up um so i think just that little little bit extra uh, is going to be good where at the same time if you play a team that's like so much just above and beyond you like in college when we played the former blues they kicked the crap out of us and these guys were all 35 and retired, but like it was, it was, it was cool to play against the former St. Louis blues, but like these are former professionals that could probably still play on some other teams. So it was, it was a little defeating, but it's, it's nice to just have that small step to, uh, to look up. Yeah. Agree. And, and to know that it's just, it's just right outside your reach. So mm-hmm. it's not impossible, right. With just a little bit of effort, you know, like you said, you get to, to where you want to be little by little, mm-hmm. but, you know, and then, and, and then I think it, it really comes down to counting your blessings, um, you know, on a constant daily basis. When, when you focus on the good things that are in your life, you're less likely to obsess about what you lack. Mm. Right. We, we know that um, there's this, there's this, uh, you know, conscious downward comparison, for example, where, you know, you, you compare yourself to your ancestors, you know, you don't, you don't have to drink water full of gross microbes, you don't have to tolerate violence, <laughs> you know, you, you, you look down and, you know, I'm so grateful for the 10 extra pounds, because it means my fridge is full. Right, <laughs> right. Right. It's like my, my mother-in-law, she's uh, well, my mother and father-in-law, like Greek, like, you know, off the boat, if you will. Uh, yeah. And and she was one of the first um, girls that actually finished, you know, that went through middle school and then they moved here when she was in high school. Uh, but she remembers like having to like no running water or, you know, that she had she had a loaf of bread for a week. And these are all stories that you hear. Like I walked two miles uphill both ways in the snow, but like she literally, you know, there was a hole like that was their bathroom and she had a loaf of bread for the week and she stayed with the family five days a week in Greece because her dad wanted her not to like stay home and, you know, be the woman, you know, like, so you've got all these stories that it's really interesting. And now like, you know, like when I, I we get a bunch of food delivered, she said, well, I didn't have this <laughs> when I was young. So she's counting those blessings, but it's funny to say grateful for the 10 extra pounds because that, <laughs> that, that at some point can become a hindrance. I know, I know where my shoe addiction came from because when I was a kid, I got one yes. pair, I got one pair of shoes for the whole school year. And when I first started making anything over $200, you know, not just working at Abercrombie with my shirt off. Yes. I was the shirtless guy at Abercrombie. Uh, You know, I buy, (laughs) I buy buy three or four (laughs) pairs of shoes with every paycheck before I knew it. I like 60 pairs of gym shoes. Like, Why the hell do I need these? And then finally my, my wife, uh, Maria, at one point she's like, do you think it's because you didn't, you only had one pair of shoes every year? I'm like, you know what? That's what happened. So yeah. 10 extra pounds or 60 pairs of sneakers, man. I, I get where you're coming from. It is, but it's interesting when you dive into that, right? And then you go, wow, like I'm 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 wicked grateful for you know the 60 pairs of shoes. But but that internal dialogue mm-hmm. is where I think what what really can set you apart. But yeah, yeah I mean, and you know, I, I like to compare myself to myself um, and use myself for that internal evaluation. I think that you there's there's so many like fitness apps right out there that, that take you from like what is it like couch to 5k or something mm-hmm. you know or you know 365 push-ups in a year or, you know 10 push-ups every day you know so many like incremental victories you know I, I I think that a happy runner always compares himself to his last run mm-hmm. you know not the others who are faster okay. so like just that you know just that little bit of using yourself for that internal evaluation, I, I think is super important. Um, but, you know, it, it, it is like, it's one of those things where I think if you, <clears throat> you focus on the good that goes on on a daily basis inside your yourself, inside your circle, and then you put action items in front of you, could be, could be writing on the mirror, could be the to-do post-it notes, could be, you know, using our phones to your advantage to set the reminders, 
but just making those small incremental changes, especially now, as we're talking to everybody in, in 2021, you know, I mean, so many, so many individuals are focused on what's my new year's resolution. It doesn't just have to be a physical resolution, right? Like there's so many positive changes we can make in the new year um, and, and put those action items in place. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really good advice because I, I, I know that I've tried to get away from that um, because, you know, as we've discussed, I've, you know, I've, I've had some issues in 2020 and, you know, I tried to figure out life and where I was going and I stopped in person training. And then I didn't know if I was going to quit the fitness industry. And then, you know, I lost a massive job because I didn't have enough followers and they were picking somebody else with more followers. And like, wait a minute, well, what about credentials? I got a book. I've been on national TV. I've trained all these celebrities. What are you talking about? I said, it's based off of followers. And all I could really do, I remember getting on the phone with you and all I could really do is just compare myself to myself at that time. I, I couldn't control anything beyond that. And yes, I had those days where I just felt down. I was pissed off and made my social media post. I'm going to quit in the fitness industry, whatever. And it wasn't a matter of me quitting the fitness industry. I just needed to find what was right for me in this industry, because I truly feel that I have something that nobody else has. It just, I, I needed to find that blue ocean, if you will, right. In the business terminology, or I need to find my yeah. red ocean. So um, that was really, really helpful for me to just have that mind shift and think, okay, I know what the hell I'm doing. Like I'm, I'm reputable, like, sure. I'm going to lose some jobs to social media, but at the same time, I'm going to gain a lot more internally from just having that self reflection um, to move myself forward. Well, in reality, that, that failure, you know, the job that you didn't get was, was simply feedback, right? Mm -hmm. It, it, it's not that you're, you're, you're not good enough. It's not that you're bad at what you do. It's not that you're incapable. And I think that's where a lot of people get stuck yeah. is feedback instead of using the word failure, but feedback gives you the opportunity to look at what's not working mm. and figure out how to make it work. Yeah. Well, here's the funny thing about that job. They called me back mm. and I landed it now. Ah, uh -huh after months so e? that's coming late january everybody um e? and, and you know you and you know what company i'm talking about yeah. so um you know that's it's it's really interesting kind of how that comes and i don't know if that would have really come if i wasn't aware of myself and i even talked to the company i'm like it's really unfortunate that you guys are choosing things based off of numbers and i think i think they came back and they had a spot open up they're like okay no, you don't, ha you don't have these numbers, but we believe in you enough that you're going against people that have millions of followers and you've got a hundred thousand, whatever, but we believe that you have the education and the knowledge to do this to knock it out of the park. Yeah. Well, well, I agree hands down that you have all of, all of the credentials and the knowledge to do it. But what's interesting is this, check this out for a minute. What, what you just said to me sparked something in my mind is you said, um, I'm going to butcher it, but you basically <laughs> said that during that time, you had to find out, you know, how to be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is what I always tell people is when people come to me and go, how do I build my brand? How do I build my brand? How do I, the only way, not the only, the best way, the fastest way, the best way to build your brand is authentically. Mm -hmm. So what's interesting is, so when I look back at, at being outside it is the time that you and I were on the phone and, and you were, you were upset that you didn't get that job that time period from then until they called you back. When I look at what happened to you, I look like you became the most authentic version of Joey Thurman that I've ever seen. Everything that you put on social media was special. Every post that you made was relevant. And I think that that feedback was literally just God's way of saying, you're moving in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you this experience. You created this incredibly authentic brand and then bam, you landed it. You literally put yourself at the top of that to-do list, brother. Yeah. I, well, I, I appreciate that. And I, I think that's the thing that, you know, we, we talked yesterday when we were preparing for this and we always look at, you know, failure as this negative thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm even, you know, prepping. And when you contacted me about this, doing this podcast, 
and I'll dude, I'll have you on for any every single podcast you want to. Is you're my boy, but like you contacted me, I literally said this is crazy because I I'm writing the proposal for my second book, and I wrote a section about failure, and you're going to fail, and you absolutely need to fail, and it's not all this like shit like oh you know. Uh, two steps forward, one step back or whatever. I mean, how many people in business like go bankrupt, lose their job, do all oh. sorts of stuff. I mean, you look at, was it um, uh, the Harry Potter author? Is that JK, JK Rowling? JK. Is that, I think yeah. she got turned down like 13 times or some, something crazy about her book and they're like, Oh, you're not any good. And, and she's a billionaire now, which is just unreal. And yep. you can, you can find all of these things uh, that about people failing, but we still look at it as a bad thing. And you even mentioned, when we talk about fitness, like the only time that you, you were spot on when we talked yesterday, like we go, Oh, you need to take these reps to failure. But that's really the only time that we look at that as a positive thing. Isn't that wild, right? You how many times have you said, or your clients have said, man, that was the best workout ever. I didn't think I could go that hard. I didn't right. think I could lift that much, right? Like those are the stories that we revel in when you go to failure. Yet it's the only part of our life that we're accustomed to going into failure, knowing that we need to go there to win. <laughs> that, that is it. It's just crazy to really, really, really think about it because, you know, it, it's anytime when I show somebody a new exercise or you do a new eating plan or whatever it is. Like one thing that drives me crazy about the whole 30, if we're talking about a diet is because they like, you've got to go 30 days with all these sort of, you know, different foods and stuff. And it, and it's, it's, these are good foods. You should be eating these. But if you fall off the bandwagon at one time and you have like a piece of cake, you got to start from day one, you failed. What are you talking about? Yeah. These people were eating Cheetos and Doritos and Mountain Dew, my diet in college, basically, uh, you know, and they've, they've been had nothing but greens and fruit and protein, whatever, you know, it, 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 well, I know the whole thing. I did a whole episode on it, but uh, like you go through right. that whole thing and you have a piece of cake and now you got to go back to day one. What, what, hey, what are you talking about? That, that failure may have been the yeah. thing that can actually help push them forward. Realize like, oh, I actually felt like shit when I ate that piece of cake. Maybe I should just yeah. go back to eating good again. Right. Well, and in, in, in to dive into that a little bit, right, it's the pain versus pleasure scenario. So many individuals, you know, when it, when it is food related, as you know better than I do, when you're working with clients, so many individuals have a relationship with food because of emotional triggers. Mm -hmm. And so there's more pleasure that's associated to that particular food or that particular meal or that, that favorite bar or restaurant the pleasure that comes from that experience is more than the pain. Mm -hmm. And so it really tapping into that to understand why I had that piece of chocolate cake. And like you said, if that piece and I reflect back on it and I go, oh my goodness, you know what? That actually made me feel terrible. And I'm going to use that as momentum to move forward. Mm. That's when we haven't failed. That's that's when we haven't failed. Like for me, you know, what you're talking about, I I, I term it self-construction. Mm. Like there's no finish line to self-construction. Life is this open-ended pursuit, in my opinion, that constantly, if you're doing things, should lead you to new truths. And those truths can only come from having real authentic dialogue within ourselves. So how do we move forward from that? You know, how do we take those experiences? I mean, and essentially make your dream. How do you do that? <laughs> right. Such a good question. How, how do you, how do you fail and, and continue to get back up? Yes. I mean, how, how do you bust your face, break your nose, go to prison, lose that job, get a divorce, yeah. whatever, you know, I mean, I, I talk about this, you know, and being the new year, it's very timely. I made a post on my story the other day. I said, would you try to ruin a relationship before the new year to fix it after the new year? And people are like, no, of course, that's stupid. Why would I do that? Like, why are you doing that to your body and to yourself yeah. and trying to fix it? Interesting perspective. Cause you hear that all the time, right? I'm good till January. Yeah. Like, okay, why don't you go, you know, cheat on your husband or wife or do a bunch of blow or whatever, just wreck all of your relationships. Be like, you know, it's January one. It's all good now. I, I'm going to start from a new. Right. Is it, 
is it January one or is it January four? It's, it's, it's like, really, <laughs> that usually, yeah, you get that the you, Monday. you you get the weekend and everything always starts on Monday. Okay. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to be super okay. clear. And in I case wanted. in case you're listening, my 90 day sculpt system case study program starts on January fourth, <laughs> which is going to be incredible. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, carry on. So how how do we go forward? I mean, you know what? I think you have to have that first dialogue with yourself and, and ask who are, who is it that you're afraid to fail in front of? I think so oftentimes nobody wants to, to, to hit record on their phone because they don't want someone, you know, Sally Pants 444, you know, from Bangladesh to come on Twitter and call you a loser. <laughs> hey, Sally Pants 444 is, is she's lovely. Sweet lady, sweet lady. I apologize, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like it's that that constant that like thing in the back of your head where like what is it? You don't want to. Is it a mentor? Is it is it your brother, your sister? You know who has a great job? You know at at the city. You know who is it that you don't want to fail in front of? I think that's the first thing to address. This is what holds so many people back. Like. I can't even I can't even tell you how many people I come across where they go, hey, I got this great idea, or I want to do this one thing, or okay, well, what is it that stops you? And it usually it's so funny. Most people, and you hear this on all like the shark tanks, and you know, it's always money or time, right? Most of the time that's BS. Mm -hmm. Most of the time. In today's world, if you're creative enough, you know, on a zero percent interest credit card, you can you can fund your landscaping business for the next 12 months, you know, or with crowdfunding, you can get your widget off the ground. If you're creative and you've got a little bit of hustle, you can make some moves in today's world with the, with the advancements in technology. But where you don't want to address is if I make this leap and if I fail, I'm now going to have to have a really tough conversation with my significant other. I'm not going to be able to have money for, our kids' education, whatever that thing is that's whispering to you in the back of your mind, that's the first thing that I think you need to address. Who are you afraid to fail in front of? Yeah, I mean, you know, that is huge right there because I've always looked at things, you know, when I when I want to look back at at my life, and it's not like if it's because I was on TV or if I made a bunch of money, which I haven't done yet, um, that will define my success, but my, my success will be defined by those people that are with me. Will they say that they're proud of me? I'm proud that he was my dad. I'm proud that he was my husband. I'm proud of my son, my nephew, my brother, whatever it is. So it's huge to think about like, who are you afraid to fall on your face in front of? Well, it's interesting when, when you talk about proud, I, I relate that back to your purpose, right? Like the number one way for, to be depressed and sad is to live your life based on other people's opinions. Mm. And so when you talk about being proud, right? You, you, want, you want the missus to be proud of you. You want the little man to be proud of you, right? You, those things are the truest expression of who you are. Right. So what's interesting is you recognize that you realize that you've got this like the supreme opportunity inside you to make those people around you proud, which is why I believe when you didn't give that job and you forced yourself to become incredibly authentic in this space. Now you can look back and go, you know what, no matter what job comes to me in 2021, I know that these people in my life are going to be incredibly proud of me mm -hmm. regardless of whether the world deems this a failure or feedback because I've made the right steps. I've made the right decisions. I've told everybody the truth. The losses are going to give you just as much information as your victories. And I think that loss, you know, that you and I had on the phone months ago has really set you up for this incredible victory. Yeah. I like but, that. So how do we, how do we have, how do we have that perspective, right? How do how do we look at that? And you, you talk about the feedback and, uh, you know, good enough and always wanting more. Like, how do we really put this into the perspective where we can actually take those things and use them for success? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think, so I have, um, you know, you, you had mentioned my why theory, 
you know, that I, I was able to talk to a lot of people about months ago. I, when I, when I go in, I, I've spent the last eight years um, going in and, and speaking to inmates in the Department of Corrections. And there really is no other group of people on the planet who uh, are, are concerned with self-improvement and, and betterment and really the, the second chance, if you will. So when I speak to them and when I, when I talk to anybody about, you know, what's, how do I move forward? It, it, it comes down to the plan, the path and the purpose. Those are the three things that I really talk about. When you attach a purpose to an individual, you attach something so deep and so moving that it in itself becomes the drive for you, like you had mentioned, being proud. I share that same tenet with you, right? You and I are both providers. That's a heavy burden that we carry on our shoulders. And we realize that we need to be successful for those people, right? It, I don't just want to be successful in the world so that I have a great bio before I step on stage. Or You and I want to feel fulfilled right. that each day we live to the truest expression of ourselves and live up to all of the potential that our cells have inside of us. So I think the plan, the path, and the purpose. And, and, and for me, when I walk people through that, um, you know, it, it, I'll digress for, for just a quick second. One of the things, you know, you had talked about service really quickly, right? And we live in this, in this, I just came across this quote the other day, but we live in this society where everybody wants to be famous, right? Everybody wants to be famous for something, but let me see if I'm going to butcher it. It, it. it said it was Martin Luther King. And he basically said that you must find a way to serve because not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service. And so that, that, that really, that really stuck with me, but um, going back to this plan, this path and this purpose, you know, when you really look at um an individual who, who needs a plan in life, you know, or, or, or just 2021, or maybe it's just the day, you know, I think right now, you know, you and I talk about this all the time. There's a lot of pain out there in the world. There's a lot of people who are struggling for different reasons. Um, so many, so many leading causes that we read each day, right. That are genuine, generally go back to some basic tenets of life, which is, you know, eat a variety of good foods and, and treat people well and get outside and move, right? That kind of seems to alleviate a lot of these, you know, comorbidities that we're seeing at present time. But when you, when you have a plan in place, we all know that you, you have this idea to move forward. This is my plan, okay, over the next 90 days. So in that plan, I, I like to teach people to have SMART goals within that plan. SMART being an acronym, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So as you're going through this plan and you're setting these goals, make sure that they're specific. It's not just, I wanna lose 20 pounds. That's not a specific goal because you know, and, and I've used this in the past, I'm sure you have as well. Would you rather lose 20 pounds or would you rather be three dress sizes smaller? The answer is always the three dress sizes smaller. The 20 pounds are just this, thing in my head, right? So if I was stronger and I was sexier and I was sleeker and I was three dress sizes smaller and I weighed the same, right? That, that's always an interesting perspective to give to, to women. So as you have this plan and you make these smart goals, I think it's incredibly important to realize that they need to be specific. Why, why do you wanna lose X pounds? Why do you want to save $100? Why do you want to make someone smile? What is the what is the specific why behind it? And make those goals actionable. Then, you know, after we've we've planned it out, the the path. I think when you make a plan and you don't have any action items, right? It's like the individuals who pray and never get off their knees to make anything work, mm -hmm. right? It, after you pray and pray and pray, you know, it's time to go to work. And so this is the path for me where what is the action items that I'm going to take? Okay, if it is 10 pounds, then it is going to be 30 minutes of movement a day. How do I qualify that? 10 minutes of walking 
after every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? That's my path mm -hmm. to lose my X pounds. But purpose is really <clears throat> where I want to focus. When you start with the purpose of why you really want to do something, you, you really understand who you are at that point. And so when you are able to look yourself in the mirror and say, I want to save $100 or I want to save a certain dollar amount so that I can retire, so that I can play with the grandkids or be the best grandparent in the world, that specific why that's attached to that purpose of saving X dollars or losing X pounds becomes so important that everything else fades away. And when you've attached that purpose to all of your action items throughout the day, it goes back to the authenticity of you, who you are, is reinforced. And the social media trolls and, and the influences have less of an impact mm -hmm. as you found your own purpose. That's to me, my three pronged approach, my friend. Well, that's a good approach. You know, I can be poked by all those prongs and I think I do quite well. <laughs> you know, and I want to fit into a smaller dress. So <laughs> I mean, I mean really, really, <laughs> right. You're, you, you have great calves. Oh, they're all right for a dude that's six, three. I mean, you know, hockey, <laughs> hockey, hockey players aren't known for, you know, great calves, but um, you know, I've had, I had to work on them uh, tremendously. So good thing I've been under quarantine because I've been able to lift wow. and play with my son. And that's pretty much what I've been doing. <laughs> but yeah indeed you know i i i think you know when you really you know when you really look at purpose it really impacts the way that you communicate to yourself and the way that you communicate to others mm -hmm. you you find so many people that are inspiring leaders or you know of organizations or companies and they communicate from the inside out and you know when you look at you know, Apple's a prime example of, of how they how they dictate or detail what's in their product. It's usually from the inside out. You know, and you have so many of these like thought leaders of today's times who who have gone through the grit and and waded through the crap to build a company and are now just pillars in their community or championing the cause of grit and fortitude. You know, the Andy Frisellas of the world who are just dominating the public sphere, telling people. I, I understand that you see all of my vehicles. I understand that you see these things in the background, but what you don't see are the 25 years of pain, mm -hmm. you know, the decades of me sleeping in the back of my supplement store uh, on a mattress on the floor because I couldn't afford rent and a, and a storefront. Those things are not features and benefits of a company. Those things are purpose. And, and it's an inspiring message, right? Like, not only is it inspiring when, when someone finds their purpose, but when you, when you focus on the purpose and you talk about that purpose can be actually grounded in human biology, not psychology, but biology. And if you look at a cross section of the brain, looking from the top down, it's usually broken into like three major components. And what, what a lot of people will refer to as like our, our newest brain, the homo sapien brain, the neocortex, right? It corresponds with that what, okay? And it, it's the rational, it's the analytical, it's the thought, it's the language. Then you have these, these two middle sections that make up the limbic brain. And that's responsible for trust and feeling, decision-making. It, it, it's that like, it has no ability to understand like, vast amounts of information, for example. It, it's the, when people tell you, oh, this is my gut decision, right? Like your guts don't make decisions, but that's the portion of your brain that just makes you feel right about things. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's interesting. And so when you, when you start to communicate from the inside out, you're actually sending that same message to the part of your brain that controls your behavior. And, and that is where the change happens and sticks. Mm. All three of those components, you know, are super important, but the difference between change and rhetoric is the real ability to communicate that purpose mm. internally and externally. 
Yeah. And if, if you look at a lot of these people that are incredibly successful, I mean, there's no true overnight success stories anymore. Like you said, like sleeping in the back of the supplement store or your car or, you know, how many UFC fighters do you hear that were homeless and then, you know, yeah. clean the floor and toilets just to, you know, be able to train. Like, I, I think that people, we, we always just see the highlight reel and the end point, but we don't yeah. ever see, I mean, even look at singers, you know, like, uh, you know, I, don't, I remember like Jessica Simpson, they thought that she was just overnight success, but like she was going and singing at like churches and all sorts of stuff and they're working her way up. And there's, you know, I never thought that I would talk about Jessica Simpson on a podcast, but like, <laughs> you, like there are all <laughs> those people. Or, you know, <laughs> yeah. So uh, you, you so don't, relevant. That's, that's right. So you you don't like all of a sudden wake up and know how to become this uh, amazing pianist. Like it takes all of this work yeah. and hard work and people only see you when you're at the top of your game. And then they love when people fail, right? And they love when they fall because we like to point that out. And yes. then, but, but then everybody truly does. And you talk about this in Accomplished Ventures and this is an amazing segue, by the way. Everybody loves a good comeback story, man. You're absolutely right. What you're talking about is, you know, people, that narrow, distorted slice of reality that's displayed on social media is like perfectly constructed to make you feel discouraged. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's very interesting. But yeah, to, to your point, you know, I'm, I'm from Boston and, and, and for everybody listening, go Patriots, go Celtics, go Red Sox. Um, but, uh, yeah, I usually get a lot go, of flack for that. Being go Packers, there. go Blues, uh, and go Cardinals <laughs> since I grew up in St. Louis and Wisconsin. All right, there we go. Carry on. But, you know, regardless of whether you're like a Patriots fan or a Tom Brady fan, I like bringing it back to sports. Like you talked about, we love, you know, and I watched a great game last night, you know, the Raiders game, which 26 seconds left. It was just an incredible game, but people talk on Monday morning about the games that were nail biters, mm -hmm. right? Down by 17 in the fourth quarter, you know, beaten, lost your tight end. Like, and then you come back. Like that comeback story, it's what we live for. It's what we love to see. Nobody wants to see a game that goes 47 to seven. Mm -hmm. You want to see an just this incredible, you know, determination of, of perseverance with passion, a little bit of luck, like, that to me, that sports mantra is exactly what life is supposed to be about. And so to your point, like with accomplished ventures, yeah, I mean, it to be able to transform the lives of others through a second chance is, is has been the greatest, you know, purpose, you know, that I, that I, I've found, so to speak. Um, you know, we take job skills and, and curriculum education, you know, life skills, into the prison and, and we sit face to face with these individuals and we have incredibly hard dialogue with folks about what were the decisions that led to them being where they are and, and who in that process has been harmed. And then what are the decisions that we need to make uh, to put us on a good path with an incredible plan and tenant, tenanted back to a purpose. Um, you know, it's interesting because I, one of the things that separates us from a lot of these other nonprofit organizations is a lot of these nonprofits start on the outside. And this to me, as you can tell, it's, it's, it's my overarching theme of purpose and why it starting within is one of the biggest ways to not let, you know, hashtag failure get into your mind. But when you start with inside inside these prisons you make the most impact after an individual has been sentenced to a certain period of time that's the day that their re-entry into society should begin not the day that they leave you know you look at some of these people who have been incarcerated for years you know decades who don't even understand how an iphone works the difference between a debit card and a credit card you know probably couldn't tell you how to obtain, you know, a mortgage or a vehicle or, you know, a lot of these things that you and I take for granted that everybody takes for granted because the information's at our fingertips. Um, and so, you know, when I, when, when I sat back and I thought, man, you know, I'm, I'm incredibly fortunate. I've had the opportunity to go through this process. I I've sat in this cold, dark cell. 
I, I've had the sunlight literally hit my face as I was on the, the workout yard to let you know that you're still alive. I've been there. And so I speak this language to these guys and I let them know that this isn't the end. This is just the beginning. This is the beginning of your second chance. If you have the right internal dialogue, if you have the right action items, and if you have the right purpose. So, I mean, how do they build that, you know, from having that adversity, you know, whatever their, their time is and how do you begin with them? Like you need to have that dialogue, but I mean, they don't see the light of day for months or years. I mean, that's gotta be incredibly defeating to, you know, be just completely away from society like that. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Big time. You know, the, the thing that you can do and, you know, I posted this the other day, you know, I, I'm grateful for everything because I came from nothing. You know, that, that to me is where we, we keep the focus with these guys that are on the inside. And so, you know, kind of goes back to your 60 pairs of shoes analogy. You know, if you're an inmate inside and you have a couple pairs of shoes, you know, one for the workout yard, you know, one for the chow hall and one for visitation, you consider yourself incredibly lucky, incredibly fortunate. And, you know, I was, I was in, I was in the airport uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually, uh, with a friend of mine and, and he was, you know, asking me about the process and, you know, how do you, how do you overcome the prison stigma? How do you get through it, et cetera? And I, I looked at him and just like, I'll tell you today, I, I consider myself incredibly fortunate when you look at the people that are around you and the, the, the millions of little ones who die because of some horrible disease or, you know, cancer, you know, we all have loved ones that have been impacted by some horrible disease and taken too early. When, when you see friends and family members who are in relationships that are negative, you know, or, or don't lift them up, those to me are lifelong conditions. And, you know, my, my short stint in the pen, you know, was an opportunity for me to take what was a horrible, horrible failure, an oversight and turn it into a message. Um, and so we take those messes in life and we turn them into messages. Staying focused on where you came from, staying focused on how many pairs of shoes you have for the different occasions really allows you to be grateful for anything and everything that comes your way, regardless of whether that's in person or on social media. Hmm. Very good. Travis, one more question for you. People, There's a lot of people listening right now or watching by the way, everybody, this goes on my YouTube, Joey Thurman Fit. Um, another social media plug. Uh, for people that are feel like they're a failure right now, or they're just down on their luck, or as you said, they're not worried about their waistline if they're waiting in the soup line. I mean, how can they find that hope? What's your advice for them right now if they just feel like they can't get out of it and they're never going to get out of it? Mm, it's such a... Boy, oh boy, it's such a difficult question to answer with, with one arrow, if you will. Um, you know, the people that I have found that are struggling right now are, are really overwhelming themselves with information that's coming from external sources. That to me is something that we should stop doing like immediately. If you're an individual who's listening to this, who is genuinely down on your luck, who's, who's genuinely depressed, you know, or, or has some negative thoughts, the first thing that I would tell you to do is to turn off all social media, turn off all of that negative energy, and I would go outside and I would take a 30 minute walk on a daily basis. I would make it the same time each day so that it would build incremental habits. That little bit of positivity will start to stimulate that, that dopamine that you get from when you feel you're getting accomplishments, right? For me, if you truly are in a situation where you feel like there's no hope, where you feel like there's no way out, I would tell you to look up and to look inward before I would tell you to look on social media for an answer. Look up and look in. 
Travis, where can people find you, my man? Hiding on an island. <laughs> Google me, make fun of my mugshot. No, right? That's always my favorite one. It's always my favorite one. You could you go through, right? It never, it, it, I'm sure it's much similar to you. It goes back to, let me give people this story. This will be a fun one to end on. Let me give people this story. No matter what you do, right? Everybody wants to come to you because you're the expert, mm -hmm. right? Hey, Joey, I saw that. Jennifer lost 48 pounds with you in 16 minutes. And, you know, <laughs> right. Like people are like, I got to be with you. I got to be with you. You're the expert. You're the go-to guy. And then when you hit them with the facts, when you go, Hey, I'm, I'm not cheap. Like I'm expensive. And on top of that, I'm going to keep you accountable. And on top of that, I'm going to give you the real gravity of the situation. And they go, Oh, I need it. I want it. I love it. I need you. I need you. I need you. <laughs> you always get, those individuals who turn into haters because they couldn't live up to their own set of expectations. And so then they want to throw back in your face. Oh, Jennifer gained her weight back. You're really not that good. Oh, uh, Mar Mario told me that you said negative things about me behind my back. I, I saw your mugshot. You're a horrible human. You're like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Just so you're aware, this was the same individual who you worked with over the course of X amount of days, weeks, months, and years. What I found is that those people are projecting that negativity back on themselves. When they see you at such a level, they go, oh my goodness, I need to get there. I need this person in my life because they'll lift me up. And then when they can't live up to their standards, when they miss their coaching calls, when they don't eat correctly, whenever when they fail, they turn that around on you. And those are the people that you don't want to surround yourself with. You don't want the people that will bring you down like a crab in the bucket. You want people around you who go, you know what? This is life. I take accountability. This is life unfiltered, uncropped. And sometimes we go through some muck together, but sure as heck, we're going to figure it out. We're going to come out of this better. So no matter what, if you are an entrepreneur out there, if you're just getting started, you know, if you've got a landscaping company and Mrs. Jones wrote a nasty Yelp review and you're beside yourself because you've got a hundred satisfied customers, just realize every single one of us have been in that same situation. We've all been talked about negatively by Sally Pants 433. We've all had the individuals in our lives who pretended that they wanted the best for us and didn't and didn't paint very rosy pictures about us. Mm -hmm. So if you are being talked about, just realize you are doing something right. Mm. Man, I'm being talked about all the time. I must be doing a bunch of things, right? <laughs> just try. By the way, I think Sally Pants 433 is cousins of Sally Pants 444. <laughs> right, likely, very likely. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> right. But yes, yes, indeed. You know, I, I think you just stay focused. It, it is, it's just, you, you stay focused on exactly ultimately what is your purpose in this game and, and do not use social media, uh, hashtag failure. Do not use social media as a measuring stick for anything that you are trying to accomplish. Understand that social media is a tool. Media is a tool and realizing that you're not particularly good at something is a helpful lesson, never a hindrance in life. All right, everybody. I'm Joey Thurman. Let's look up and look in to another episode of the Fatter Future Podcast. Don't be a fatty, F-A-D-D-Y. Be a part of the future. Check out Travis Ritchie everywhere. Google him. Check out his mug shot. Send it to me. Do a meme. It'd be great. Uh, I'll see you next week for another episode of the fatter future podcast check me out on social media at joey thurman fit and if you're gonna troll troll nicely please yeah right right so true, <laughs> right, so true. Life is too short. Life is angry <laughs> take care <laughs>